Disclaimer, at the time that this video is made, the Master Grey Narrative Gundam has not been released, and a lot of the details about how Narrative Gundam was developed and built in Universal Century are fuzzy at best. Because of the published designer notes from its in real life designer, Katoki Hajime, is written from the in real life publication and design perspective. So in this episode, I am trying to translate what that would be like if we are using the perspective from Universal Century. Narrative Gundam RX-9 is a multi-purpose prototype that Anaheim Electronics built before they built new Gundam RX-93. While the Federation want a direct successor of the legendary RX-78-2 Gundam after the hiccup with Gundam Mark II, and Anaheim Electronics was looking for the next big product after the next-gen mainline mass production mobile suit, or Jagan, neither side can settle on what this Gundam should be like. And there is where Amuro Ray comes in. Not only is he the pilot of the legendary RX-78-2, he is also the son of RX-78 designer Tam Ray. He is also the commander of the mobile suit team in the newly formed London Bell fleet. Amuro not only injected the much needed political momentum behind the project, he is also a serving ace pilot who can provide valuable feedback to engineers and mechanics in Anaheim. On top of that, Amuro also brought with him designs and specifications for this new Gundam development project, which would be later known as New Gundam RX-93. Now being the son of a legendary mobile suit designer and a legendary ace pilot doesn't mean Amuro would be a great mobile suit designer as well at least at the time when Anaheim just got Amuro's designs and specifications. So Anaheim did the sensible thing and built a proof of concept prototype first. This proof of concept prototype would also double as a test bed for a backup plan if needed. Hence RX-9. This is why Narrative Gundam have so many exposed parts and mounting points or high points as they are often called on mobile suits. Another design element that is on the Narrative Gundam but not the new Gundam is the Core Fighter. An overgrown cockpit that can transform into a space jet as an escape mechanism. The blue you see here in the middle of the narrative's chest is in fact the cockpit of the Core Fighter. While this transparent material is armored, Narrative Gundam was only intended as a test bed, not for combat. So allowing the pilot to see outside directly without opening the cockpit would be a nice bonus. Core Fighter is also a design element of RX-78. Anaheim like how this system can preserve the main computer and operation records of the mobile suit much better than a typical escape pod. Pilot survivability is also higher, but most importantly is Anaheim can test out different mobile suit designs so long they are allowed the same core fighter to dock. Narrative Gundam quickly proven that Amuro is an excellent mobile suit designer. That's why New Gundam Silhouette is very similar to Narrative, except for this giant backpack. The development of New Gundam was fairly smooth except for the fin funnels. Anaham was struggling to develop a control and communication system known as Psychomule system that would fit inside Narrative or New Gundam. This also makes the fin funnels very big because they have to have Psychomule transceivers in them. One of the solutions is this backpack serving as both Psychomule system and housing for cable connection in order to reduce the size of the fin funnels. All this however become obsolete when Anaham got access to Psychoframe technology. That is a story of its own. Fast forward to UC0097 during the hunt for Phoenix, Unit 3 of Unicorn Gundam RX-0. 
The narrative was pressed into service because it was the only mobile suit that is close to the capabilities of the Phoenix that can be mobilized by the Federation. With the second loadout that narrative used during the hunt, which is what we see here, would be known as Narrative Gundam Equipment B, RX-9 slash B. The aforementioned Finvanos are upgraded to include the function of Psycho Gemma, allowing them to disable any mobile suit with Psycho Mew system in the area between them. The closer, the better. The shields are standard Jagan shield variants used by A2 or other high performance type with a smaller extension. This can be combined into one large shield, but the idea is for both arms to have grenade launchers to work with the funnels on both sides. Narrative Gundam also has basic weapons like falcons on the head and a pair of beam sabers on the rear skirt. Ultimately, Narrative Gundam Equipment B didn't capture the Phoenix and it was later modified with Equipment C for one last try. And that would be another video.